哈喽，大家好，欢迎收看我们今天的节目，我是 f e l i c i a 那今天在我们这边有一个非常特别的嘉宾，他叫 Mike Cargill。Hi, Mike, how are you? I'm doing very good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so happy that you are being here, and I'm so glad that we have the chance to know you. So I'm very happy. I tell people over and over, the key to the United States is California, and the key to California is the 35th district right here. This is where it's all going to change, and I'm just so happy to be running in this race right now. I'm trying to encourage every pastor who watches this. We cannot entertain enough. To make people want to become part of the church,、mm -hmm. the only thing the church offers, and it's the greatest thing, the church offers, is knowing that when you die, you're going to go to heaven, and you're not going to go to hell.、Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, everyone, regardless of how you get there, you will die. Yeah. What happens next? That's the one issue. That Satan doesn't want anyone to wrestle with right now. Put it off. Distract. Don't think about it. But right now, the pastors and the churches are the only ones who can provide comfort in this time that is unbelievably dark, unbelievably evil.、Yeah. We are trying to destroy. Now, the world is being run by a small cabal or group of people that are satanic worshippers. They practice rituals, and they love and worship Lucifer, Satan, and they are orchestrating world events right now, and it's impacting the church too. The church has to stand firm against this because everything we're talking about—the destruction、mm -hmm. of children—we、mm -hmm. haven't even talked about the destruction of women,、oh, and、yeah. the destruction of marriage,、mm -hmm. and the destruction of family. But it's all destroying, destroying, destroying. That's what Satan does because these are institutions by God,、yeah. designed for our happiness and and our peace and our comfort. So you want to destroy it. And actually, in First John, it says that sin is lawlessness, or lawlessness is sin. So Satan wants to defund the police. Why? Because no law, anarchy, and out of anarchy. Comes sin. It says that God actually institutes governments, and that's order, law, and order, order. for our safety and our peace.、Mm -hmm. Right? They're called peace officers. When we live in peace, we have the ability to have a family and have a marriage and have children. But if there's no peace, there's no law. It's anarchy. All of it goes away.、Mm -hmm. That's evil, and that is exactly where they are driving. All of us, not just the United States. This is worldwide right right now. Worldwide, we are witnessing a worldwide satanic attack from very very evil people, and the only thing that can stand against this is the church. The only thing, no government can stand up against this. It is being manifest in a supernatural way, physically. Yeah, the assault is everywhere. Education, the medical systems compromised, the legal systems compromised,、mm -hmm. all the world governments are compromised.、Mm -hmm. The only thing that has a chance of standing against this is the truth of Jesus Christ, preached from the pulpits of the church, and it has to be done very confidently. There is no capitulation. There is no wavering on this. This is sin, and they have to call it out. Or They'll lose their church very soon.、Uh, many people they are like running to other states because they say, "Oh, California is no hope here.、Um, if we keep staying here, we 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 just、uh, like getting worse and worse. So we better to moving out quickly." But there's no escaping this. Yeah. It, it starts in California. It has for decades now.、It、starts in California, goes across the United States. This transgender thing, you can't escape it in Texas. You know, yeah, they still have it. Yes, Florida. Yeah, everywhere. It starts in California. It rolls across, and out of the U.S. media, which is actually controlled by the CCP, right, 
it goes worldwide. So everything you see in California, the United States to the rest of the world. Just like you said, in other countries, in Indonesia, Taiwan, other countries, they didn't see this, but they will. The media will get it there. Everything you've seen in California will go worldwide. Mm -hmm. The key to California is my race right here. I don't know of any other candidate running for Congress that holds my values, that is willing to stand firm biblically against all of this. We all share the same value from the Bible, and we all receiving the Holy Spirit. So we have to. Amen. Yeah, so we have to be like this. If everyone can stand up like you, I think our society is turning back very fast. Well, I'm hoping that God will use me as an example and maybe provide encouragement or, mm -hmm. or be a sense of courage that you can stand up. You know, when it comes to abortion, God says, I knew you before you were even in the womb. Yeah, Jeremy. I knew who you were. You know, so you were a person very precious to God before you were even a lump of cells. But, but for me, now I'm running to be a congressman, a yeah. legislator. So I have to put this in laws, mm -hmm. you know. So I've seen a really good attempt with, have you heard of the heartbeat bill? From the Texas? Yes, exactly. So, but it actually started in other states. Uh -huh. But basically, if there's a heartbeat, we will recognize that that's a person. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it has a heartbeat. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. Because right now, if you die on the operating table, the last thing they will measure is your... Yeah, heartbeat. Your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So if that's the measure of the end of your life, well, let's use that as the measure of the beginning yeah. of your life, too. It's an objective measure. Mm -hmm. It's a medical, you know, it, no, no political anything if there's a heartbeat. But it's actually more important than that. For me, as a legislator, now as a Christian, we know that, that God values you before you're even born, yeah. when you're in the womb. But I have the task of protecting the people of the United States under this Constitution. Mm -hmm. So then the question becomes, when do you become a person of the United States? Right? Yeah. So are you a person when you're a teenager? How about when you're a toddler? You know, how about when you're still in your mom's tummy? Yeah. Are you a person? Because we have laws that say if you kill a pregnant woman, it's a double homicide. Yeah, because that's two. Two murders. So we recognize that as being a person mm -hmm. of the United States because we penalize that the same way we penalize a person killing another person of the United States. Yeah. So I say... If we're going to protect the people mm -hmm. of the United States, then we have to protect them at the earliest possible point. Yeah. And for me, that would be the moment of conception. Conception. Then you're a person of the United States, and I will protect you with the full force of the Constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. That's my job. I watched your campaign video. That's very interesting. Yeah, l let's take a look first. Hi, I'm Mike Cargill, and I'm running for Congress. California's 35th district. I am pro-God, pro-family, pro-life, pro-jobs, and pro-police, and always America first. In the last election cycle, I was the only candidate in the country who was actually unendorsed by the Republican Party for being too conservative. Remember, smile. It's Cargill. I am Mike Cargill, and I approve this message. You said you are being too conservative. If someone saying you are being too conservative, that means you are kind of like so extreme from some way, right? So do you afraid that voters are seeing you like, oh, this man is too extreme, too conservative, so they won't vote for you? Are you afraid of that? No, because what they are calling too extreme is exactly what the platform of the Republican Party is and the traditional values of the United States. Mm -hmm. We've always recognized marriage as being, you know, this is the state yeah. that passed Proposition 8 twice, 
a marriage is between a man and a woman. At all. That's not a radical idea. Yeah, that's it's not. It's not at all. That that mom and dad are married and they have kids. That's called the nuclear family. Yeah. That's not a radical idea. Yeah. But what the problem is, we have leadership now of the Republican Party mm -hmm. that want to depart from that. They want to pull the party to the left. Yeah. In the Mitt Romney sort of direction where rhinos. So well, you would say they are rhinos. Mm -hmm. But they're really uh, a more just a, a light a version of a Democrat because they want to get away from God and the values, the godly values yeah. that we have enjoyed for the last couple centuries. Yes. So what happened was yeah. I was attacked by George Soros. George oh, Soros? George Soros, yes, through Media Matters and Axios a number of times. And out of that, though, it was kind of like God slapped me upside the head. And because I was getting advice from all kinds of people. I've never done this before. Yeah. So they were saying, you know, you're a, a, a you know, a, a very, mo you know, a, a conservative, mm -hmm. but the district is not conservative. So they were saying you're a red candidate in a blue district. Yeah. And you have to be purple. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, yeah, you have to soft pedal this. Soft pedal and get, get more votes. Yes, yes. So that's, I was getting all kinds of advice. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I've never been in politics before. Is that right? Is that wrong? And then when Soros attacked me, and I was getting, I mean, I had a half a million hate mails and stuff coming oh, right really? in. So oh, really? How, so how, how do you know it was him? Because he owns those publications. Oh. But it was good. It was, you know, God used this. So. It was like I, he slapped me and said, Mike, you will either be hot or you will be cold. But if you're this thing in between, I'm going to spit you right out of this race. Oh. So I tore the website down and I put everything back up based on my godly values, my biblical values. And as soon as I stood for the biblical definition of marriage, support of the nuclear family, and against this homosexual, transgender agenda for children, mm. the Republican Party pulled my endorsement because they are embracing the transgender movement at the state level. Now. Yes. Yes, and people need to be aware of that. I get no support from the Republican Party, nationally or at the state level. They actually un, un, unendorsed me, pulled my endorsement because I am too conservative for them, not for my state and not for my country. Not for God. <laughs> not for God, but for the new leaders of the Republican Party. I am too much, and that's okay with me. It's going to be a hard road. You have to take a lot of pressures. But, you know, George Soros, he will not give up to attacking on you. And now you mentioned the Republican Party. They are, they think you are being too conservative. So they don't want you. But I'm not running for them. I'm running for my district. And these are the values mm -hmm. I believe that the majority of my district embrace just like I do. Yeah. So um, how can we help you? How can our audience help you? Because we have a bunch of audience just from your district. So do you have anything to say to them and how can we just uh, get started to help you? Yes, well, we always need help with the campaign mm -hmm. and we always need financial support. You know, I have a message, it, it, like, like right now, we're talking, but how does this message get out? And so I have to buy advertising time to get my message out, mm -hmm. to let the voter know. Because remember, again, when they, only, when they get their ballot, it'll say Mike Cargyle, Independent businessman, Republican, and that's all. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have my picture. It doesn't have my values. It doesn't have anything. So Only a name. That's it. So what we this is called brand awareness. Oh yeah. They have to understand that Mike Cargill means something, and they don't even know why. But when they read my name, they have to feel, because most people are not going to take the time. So they go Cargill. Oh, that feels good. I like that name. And that's why I picked for our, our slogan. It's ridiculous, it's funny, but it sticks. And I go, smile, it's Cargyle. A smile is smile. Cargyle. It's Cargyle. And it's cheesy, but I want them to remember. And when they hear the name Cargyle, if they smile, mm -hmm. or they go, I remember that. Yeah. Can you show I, us a smile? 
<laughs> well, I want them to smile because I'm the guy that's going to represent them now, yeah. not my opponent. My opponent is the opposite of everything I stand for. Yeah, let, let's talk about your opponent because uh, I know she's coming from Guatemala, but yes. she's always pretending uh, herself is a Mexican. Well, she, she pretends to be a lot of stuff. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, she says she's a Catholic, but she supports homosexuality and more importantly, abortion all oh. the way past birth. Like you know. Nancy Pelosi? Yes, like I don't, Biden? Yes, exactly. So she's pretending to be a Catholic. She's not. She's not? No, no. And she shouldn't be taking communion. I can't, you know, they should be saying the same thing about Norma Torres that they do uh, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. But she's, she's for the destruction of the family. So my opponent is for open borders. And wow, really? Very publicly. If you want to know who she is, you can go to my website, uh -huh. cargileforcongress.com, and there's a button that says, Meet My Opponent. And so Norma didn't own her name, so I bought it for her. Okay. So I own normajtorres.com, <laughs> and she didn't have a website for the name, so I was kind enough to build her her own website, too. Mm -hmm. So you can see who Norma J. Torres is in her own words, I have all sorts of video of her, and you can decide for yourself whether she represents your values or I do. Now, she wants to destroy your family. She embraces the transgender homosexual movement wholeheartedly, but she wants to destroy the families that come up from Central and South America because they're all being trafficked. They're brought here through the gangs and the cartels. So she wants the women raped. And she wants the children and the women used in labor camps. So she's for slavery. She's for slavery. She's for the abuse of, of women, the destruction of the family. And she also wants to destroy your family because of the flood of fentanyl coming through a border with no security. Yeah. So she's for the destruction of the children, their livelihoods, their future. She embraces the Green New Deal. The whole point of the Green New Deal is to destroy the U.S. economy. So she doesn't want you to drive a car. She doesn't want you to be able to afford gasoline. And when you can't afford gasoline, you also can't afford the food on the shelves. Mm -hmm. So she wants you dead. That's my opponent. That's horrible. And how can people be that evil? Like, why? She's uh, funded by George Soros? Yes. Yes, she's part of that group. If, if, this, if it's satanic people, mm -hmm. then the goal is to destroy God's creation, which is you yeah. and I. Mm -hmm. So they murder is fine with them. In fact, destroying whole nations and people, you know, because of climate change. Yeah. We want them all dead. Mm -hmm. It's all about climate now. Climate, climate change is the yes. next yes. Uh, thing on yes. the stage. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Whatever it is, they're just, they want to destroy people. Yeah. They, they, they hate people, God's creation. They want to destroy the gender of those people. They want to destroy the babies. They want to destroy the children. Mm -hmm. They want to destroy the family. This is all about the destruction of the human race yeah. by these satanic people. Yeah, but we're talking about the satanic people. Uh, you're saying that's a small group controlling all around the world. Right. right? Who are they? And what's the name of them? Just look at who is running things right now. A lot of them belong to the World Economic Forum. Uh -huh. uh, they're secret societies. Hillary Clinton and her whole clan are all part of this. Are they like literally worshiping Satan? Yes. Yes? Like, the, like we I'm are not, worshiping not, God? Yes, exactly. I put out a tweet. Yeah. And this is really bad. I put out a, 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 a tweet, uh, and then I put out a text message. Mm. And all I said was who I am, mm -hmm. pro-God, pro-family, pro-life, pro-jobs, pro-police. Yeah. I can't tell you how many responses I got that said, keep your God, I worship the devil. I worship Lucifer, and I eat fetuses. Thousands and thousands of these I got. Wow, so and, and the names they called me. I wouldn't let my wife read them. I've been attacked. Yeah, just don't, don't watch that. That's so no, evil. No, no, no. Right, right. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just curious. Like, we know 
we are wors worship God, we are worship yes. Jesus, then we can go to eternal life, right. right? But if they read the Bible, like the Satan, he believes in the Bible too. He knows what the end looks like. Those bunch of people, they know the physical body die. They are just a go down to the hell. Why they are still doing this? Well, because they believe the lie. Remember, Satan is the father of lies. Yes. Well, of course the Bible says that. Mm -hmm. God wrote the Bible, and he's going to write his own version. Oh. But the reality is, I, Satan, win in the end. That's the lie. So they are supporting Satan because they think, oh, if we stand with him, we can win at the end. Yes. Okay, so they are supporting Satan, they are worshiping Satan, and they can gather up get the power from the world, right? Right. And this is nothing new. Mm -hmm. This is nothing new. The nation of Israel was destroyed by God mm -hmm. because they were sacrificing their children yeah. to Molech, right. a satanic demon. Mm -hmm. This is nothing new. This is nothing new. And I saw something the other day I was reading in the Bible, and there was a word there I'd never seen before. Because if you watch the rap music and you watch this stuff, there's a figure that shows up over and over, and it looks like a, a person from the neck down, but it looks like a goat with horns from the neck up, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And in the Old Testament, I had never seen it before, but it talks about the goat head demon. Goat head demon? Goat head demon. You can look it up. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes, and it is satanic worship on full display in Hollywood, in the music industry, on full display, these people worship Lucifer, and they are running the country and running the world right now. That is our true enemy. It's like, not China. I, no, China I is being used. It's being used, yeah. Yes. Like God used us, yes. Satan used them. So as Christians, we love America, we love God, but how can we fight them because they got money, they got power, they got everything. We have God and he wins in the end. Mm -hmm. So we pray for one another. We're told to do that. Pray for one another. And then the church at large needs to stand against this. Mm -hmm. They need to be very vocal and see the biggest issue right now is we look like the world and that's why the church is so powerless. We've got to quit looking like the world. Well, what do you mean, Mike? That means you confront sin in your church yes. first. Don't cheat on your wife. Don't do, you know, quit drinking. Quit doing all these things that are destroying your family. Mm -hmm. But more than that, these are sins that God says are wrong. So you need to clean your own house first. Okay. So we confront sin in the church. Mm -hmm. People repent. They say, I'm sorry, Lord, I did this. I shouldn't have done that. Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. Now it's wiped away. But when the church is clean, the church is powerful. And then that's why it says we're like the light on the hill. Yeah. The light goes out and yeah. the world is attracted to the light. Mm -hmm. But right now we have nothing. We are as dark as the world in most parts. Now, now there are churches who have good pastors yes. and they are very vibrant, but they're so few. There used to be so many. Yeah. And this is a direct result of the pastors. You know, they've been infiltrated too. Don't think that this has not been going on at a very, very deep level. Um, so for me, I get to talk to people like you. I get to share the truth mm -hmm. with our audience here. Mm -hmm. um, and God willing, I get to go to Washington, D.C. and do it there if he wants me to. If he doesn't, then he'll have something else for me. So for now, the churches need to stand up. And yes. our pastors need, don't be afraid anymore, just right. to stand and speaking the truth and against the, the Satan enemy. Yes. Right. Do you know how many pastors I've met with in my district? Zero. Oh, zero? They're afraid. They won't even sit down and talk to me because I'm running for Congress and they don't want this to be seen as political. Not one pastor has just sat down with me and done what you and I are doing right now. Oh, really? Yes. Well, let, let's, I mean, I, I know some pastors in, in your district. Let, I hope let's they do. do. Yeah, let, let's do it. Do I, would will love, I would love that. Yeah. I would love to sit down with them and they can ask me anything just like you're doing right now. Anything. Anything, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, let's get this done because we are here just uh, to help people like you. What? You know, you've got the political answer. Mm -hmm. Please support my campaign and, you know, and volunteer and all that stuff. I know. But the real answer mm -hmm. is I need pastors to speak truth and then those people will vote for the truth, the godly values that I want to bring to Washington, D.C. Then I don't have to worry about anything else. Yeah, I, I think God will use this chance to let churches standing up, whether Chinese church, English-speaking church, no matter, we all Jesus Christ's body. So we have to fight yes. with Jesus Christ because he's our head, right? He's leading us. So he's leading you, he's leading us, and I just uh, hope so. In the several months, we just uh, use... Two. Only two months, right? That's it. So mm -hmm. people think the, the November is November the election. November is the election. But that's not. Because mm -hmm. in California, everybody receives a mail-in ballot. Mail-in ballot. And that occurs the beginning of October. Oh, wow. Beginning so, of October. October, yes. So people will be voting the entire month of October. So... Literally Actually, two months left. Yes, that's all. We have two months for the pastors to rise up. We've never had a Christian mm -hmm. run for this office in this area, ever, that I can find. Wow. A Christian, a veteran, who's not afraid to speak the truth. Yeah. Uh, I'm a father, uh, love my family, love my community. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, I want to bring a godly perspective mm -hmm from our district to Washington, D.C. Yes. That's what I want to do, and represent those values. I don't change. I haven't been the same man I've been for, you know, ever since I got saved about 25 years ago. Oh, 25 years ago? Yeah. When you got married with your Just, wife? Yeah, right before we got married, I got saved. Oh, and, uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So at the same time she got saved? Our, our no, got she, saved? she was uh, saved beforehand. Our oh. first date was to go to church together. Really? Yeah, yeah. Such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, I was in the music industry. We met because she and her friends were fans of this band that I was taking around the country. Oh, wow. And then uh, we dated for maybe a couple months, and then we ran off to Vegas and got married. <laughs> That's so fast. Yeah. Only a couple months? Yeah, yeah. And I know your wife is half Taiwanese, right? Half Taiwanese, half Sky. She's beautiful. I picked her out myself. She's absolutely beautiful. She's very smart, oh. and uh, and we are a great team. Great I team. can't do anything without her. She's everything to me. Yeah, that's God made marriage. Yes, that's for this woman for you. Absolutely, and you are the man for her. Yes, that's beautiful. I think so. All right, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.